Hello everyone, and welcome to this tutorial on how to create a Java Calculator GUI with Window Builder. In this video, you'll learn how to design and build a graphical user interface for a calculator using Window Builder, a powerful plugin for the Eclipse IDE. The best part? Minimal coding is required. So whether you're new to Java programming or looking to expand your skills, this tutorial will guide you through the process step by step. So let's dive in and get started. The first step is to open Eclipse. If you don't have Eclipse installed, you can download it from the official website and install it on your computer. Once you have IDE open, we can proceed with the installation of Window Builder. To install Window Builder, we need to first download it. To do this, open your preferred web browser and search for Java Window Builder. Click on the first search result and you will be directed to the Window Builder download page. Here, you will find the download link for the latest version of Window Builder. Click on the download button and navigate to the zipped column. Select the link hyperlink for the current row and click the download button. And then wait for the installation process to complete. After downloading the zip file, return to the IDE and click the help button on the menu bar. Select install new software. Click the add button, then the archive button. Then select the zip file you downloaded. Click open, select add, then click the two checkboxes. I can only go this far because I already have Windows Builder in my IDE. But go ahead and click finish, and just follow the system prompts, and you will eventually be prompted with a message that you will need to restart the IDE to fully complete the installation of Windows Builder. I will proceed with the assumption that you already installed the Windows Builder in your IDE. So let us proceed with creating a new Java project. After creating a Java project, create a package because it is a simple and effective way to keep your code organized and easy to manage. Let's now use the window builder we installed earlier. Select the second toggle option at the top left corner of your IDE. Then click Swing to view more related options. Then select Application Window. By clicking the Application Window button in Eclipse, you can create a new window that contains various GUI components such as buttons, text boxes, and menus. You can customize the window and its components to suit your needs. More into that later. As you can see, some default codes are generated automatically. These codes provide the basic structure for the window and include things like the window sizes and layout, the buttons and other widgets added to it, and the code that makes these widgets work when the user interacts. So it's like getting a ready-made frame for your window that you can customize to suit your needs. The current problem is that the code is covered with red underlines that signify an issue. So try to click the design panel beside the source panel. This panel is the place where we'll do our calculator GUI. So it is giving an error saying unknown GUI toolkit. There could be several reasons as to why this error message shows, but let us fix the error right away. So click the project option on the menu bar, then select properties. I'll click the Java build path on the left side of the window, then click the libraries tab. Click the modules path toggle option, then click the add library button. Select the JRE system library, then click next. Click the first radio button, then click the drop down button. So choose the Java SE 1.7. Click the finish button and then apply and close. You will then see that the error symbols are no longer showing. I am just going to delete the unnecessary default package. Go ahead and close the Java file and reopen it. Then click the design panel so we can proceed with creating our calculator GUI. This design panel in Eclipse is a graphical user interface or a GUI builder, which allows you to design and lay out the components of your Java application visually. So as you change the layout in the design panel, the underlying code in the source panel is automatically updated to reflect these changes. This allows you to see how the GUI components in your application will look and behave in real time, making it easier to design and customize your interface. So using the design panel in Eclipse can save time writing code because it allows you to visually create the layout of your application's GUI components rather than manually writing the code. This can be especially useful for complex structures that would be time-consuming to code by hand. 
The folders you see are categories of GUI components that can be added to your application window. These folders represent different categories of GUI components that you can use to build your application's interface. By organizing the components into folders, the design panel makes it easier to find the necessary components and add them to your application window. Click the Layouts folder, which contains different layout managers that control how components are arranged within a container. Click the Absolute Layout to carry that feature, and then click the Pre-built Window application to apply the feature. This feature allows you to organize different components for your application precisely. Try to resize the application window so we can emulate the design of a keyboard's numeric pad. Now, click the Components folder containing various standard GUI components. The first component we will use is the JTEX field, which provides a text editing area for the user to enter and edit text. In this project, we will use that to display numbers to do operations with and provide an output. Now, let us create a button using the JButton component. This component provides a button for the user to perform an action in response to clicking the button. I will show you the picture of a keyboard's numeric pad again while I finish putting all the buttons. Perfect. Let us click the first button, and instead of putting numlock, we will use this as a clear button to clear the text field above. When you click the button once, you will see the properties window. The properties window is a powerful tool that allows you to customize the properties of the selected component. It can help you create and design your Java's application graphical user interface more efficiently without manually coding them. We will focus on each component's variable and text fields. The variable field allows you to assign a variable name to the element. This can be useful if you want to access the component in your Java code and manipulate it programmatically. The text field, on the other hand, it allows you to set the text displayed on the component. Awesome. So after putting a unique variable name for each button and editing their text, we will proceed with the coding part to make them all functional. So let us start with the clear button. Double click the button and it will automatically route you to the source panel with the newly built code based on its properties. The purpose of the clear button is to clear any info on the text field. For example, if you messed up doing your calculations, just click the clear button to start over again. And to make this button work, we will call the object that we are targeting. The object that we are targeting is a text field, and to call that object, just type its variable name, and to manipulate that object to achieve our goal of clearing whatever text that we enter in it, we will add a method called .setText and an empty string parameter. And to understand how this works, you tell the compiler, hey, when the user clicks the clear button, I want you to set the output text field to an empty string to appear like everything has been cleared out. But programmatically, you have just replaced a text field with empty information. We are done with the clear button. This time, let us make all the number buttons work to test the clear button. So let's start with 7. Double click to view its code. In this block of code, we declare a string variable called number, and we assign a value to that variable by concatenating two strings together. This statement allows you to store or get the existing text in the output field, which right now is empty, and this statement will enable you to store or get the text of the button itself, which is 7. Since there is a plus operator, it concatenates two strings together and stores them in the string number variable. Then it returns the number value to the output field for users to see and that is through the dot set text method. We are going to repeat the same process for the other buttons.
Perfect. Now that the numeric keys are functional, let's proceed with the operator keys. So without clicking any buttons, go back to the source code by clicking the source panel. In this code that we wrote, we declared global variables. So when you declare a variable as global, you can access and modify its value from any method within the class. This can be useful when you need to share data between multiple methods, or when you need to store information that is used by multiple objects, which is exactly how our overall code is structured right now. We declared three variables with a double data type. We will use these variables to store numeric values and perform calculations. We declared a string variable called operation and formatted result. The program will use the operation variable to determine which operator the user clicked to perform calculations. As for the formatted result string variable, this will be used to format the output to either no decimal place or contain at least one decimal place. Let's return to our design panel and double click the division operator. In this block of code, we are now putting a functionality for the division symbol. In this line of code, double.parseDouble is a Java method that lets you convert a text into a number that can be used in calculations. By default, text field widgets accept values from the user as a string. So if the user types series of numbers or digits, the program will recognize it as a string and not a number. So therefore, we will use the double.parseDouble Java method to convert a string to an actual number. The following line of code will clear out the output field after you click the division symbol. This will allow you to enter the second number to perform calculations on. And for the last line of code in this block, we'll initialize the operation string variable to have a value of the division symbol. We will use that value later. We will copy and paste these codes into the other operators block. After making the operators work, let us now configure the enter button, aka the equal symbol. In this code block, we initialize a second num variable, just like we did on the first num variable. The first num variable gets the first string digit from the user after clicking the operator symbol, and it then clears out the field so that they can enter the second number. So when the user press enter after typing the second number, it performs the calculation and displays you the answer. To achieve this calculation, we use the if statement for the program to determine which calculation should be performed based on the user's operator symbol. So if the user enters the division symbol, the program will do a division calculation. In this line of code, we convert a double data type value to a string value. Because as mentioned earlier, text fields can only provide and store string values. Therefore, the string that value of is a method in Java that converts a value of any data type to its equivalent string representation. Go ahead and save and try to run the program. Twelve divided by six is two, which is correct but the output shows 2.0 instead of just simply 2. Why? Uh, remember that we declared a global variable named answer to have a double data type? The double data type in Java is used to represent decimal numbers. So when you declare a double variable and assign it a value without a decimal point, the decimal point is assumed to be at the end of the number. It then converts the value of the answer variable, which is 2.0, into a string, which is why it shows you 2.0 in the output field. To change this, we are going to do something called conditional formatting.
In this code block, inside the enter object, we use a nested if statement. We use nested if statements when we need to test a condition within another condition. In the inner if statement, we would like to know if the answer variable that has a value of 2.0, for example, is exactly equal to the value of the answer variable when converted to an integer using the cast operator int. If the condition is true, it will format the answer using the string.format method. This method also converts a variable with a data type like double to a string variable and format its decimal values at the same time. This format string specifies that the value should be formatted as a floating point number with zero decimal places. Then it assigns the value to the formatted result string variable. If the condition is false, then the format string specifies that the value should be formatted with at least one decimal place, then it assigns the value to the formatted result string variable. The value of the formatted result will be displayed in the output field using the dot set text method. So let us test our code for the division symbol before doing the same for the other operator symbols. It works. Let us now copy the code blocks of the division symbol to the other operator symbols. Once done, go ahead and save, then run your program. Perfect. You have now successfully built your very own calculator GUI using Window Builder in Java. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and that you were able to follow along easily. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel for more content like this. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Goodbye for now.